Today is August the 20th, 2021. My name is Tanya Fincham. I'm with Oklahoma State University with the Oklahoma Oral History Research Program in the library. And with me is Becky Shipley, event co-chair for the Remember the Ten Run, as well as the race day operations in charge person. Let's put it that way. Okay, <laughs> that works. And this interview is being conducted in Stillwater and will be part of the project called We Will Remember Promise. And by way of context, uh, January 27th, 2001, a plane crashed carrying 10 men associated with the men's basketball program here at OSU. And in the days that followed, the university and community made a promise to the families of those 10 men that they would never be forgotten. And then in, June, uh, in 2007, the first Remember the 10 run was held. And this is the 15th, this will be the 15th year yes. of the run in a week from tomorrow, August the 28th. Yes. Historically, the run has been held on the third Saturday of April, but this year it was moved due to the pandemic, ongoing pandemic. So thank you for being here. Thank you. Before we get to the promise and the run, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, I moved to Oklahoma in 1982. I, I was born in Virginia lived most of my my young childhood and until I was 14 in um, around Ohio. We moved around quite a bit, but my, my stepdad got a job in Ardmore, Oklahoma. And up until that point, I had gone to a new school every year. I was always the new kid. And so when we moved to Ardmore, my mom told my dad, my stepdad, that um, we weren't moving again until the girls graduated high school. So for the first time ever, I got to go to the same school for four years and made some fabulous lifelong friends. And of course, I didn't know anything about Oklahoma State. When I was eighth grade, I moved to Ardmore and I actually came here because I had a bunch of friends coming here. And so I came and just never left. So in that 1986, I moved to, to Stillwater. So you graduated from Ardmore High School? And yes. In 1980? In 1986. And then at that point, what were your plans? What were, what uh, were well, your girls? I was going to pursue a marketing degree and I only made it like halfway through and got married and started a family and never finished my degree. <laughs> <laughs> never too late. Though. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so, and then I started, um, I stayed home with my kids for several years and they got to where they were all in school. So I needed something else. So now I am office manager for a state farm agent. And how long have you done that? Um, I worked for Scott for 24 years, okay. but I have just been the office manager about the last three or four. It's been a while. <laughs> well, someone in that position, what would like a typical day for you would be? Um, I don't have to answer the phones a whole lot anymore and talk to people. I do a lot of the behind the scenes busy work, just making sure that, that things are getting requested and issued properly and keeping people on task. and. I mean, I, I talk to my fair share of people, but it's just, I kind of miss that actually. But I just do a lot of, a lot of busy work. And I know his office is close to campus, so you can get to campus. Yes. Uh, whenever you want, just about. Yep. We are right next door to the OSU Foundation. Okay. And so, you know, after, after 20 years of working there, I don't work Fridays anymore. So I work four 10 hour days. So now that I have my little puppy, I actually, most Fridays you can find me walking around campus in the mornings. <laughs> matter of fact, the library fountain is one of her favorite places. <laughs> yeah, and they're working on the back, behind the, the north side of the library. They're redoing that, so oh, yes. just to see how that's going to yeah. get you close to finishing. It seems like the whole campus is under construction. Does the dog get in the fountain? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we kind of time it where there's like halfway through our walk so she can jump in and cool off and then we finish our walk. So where in Ohio did you live? Um, it was like southwest, like southwest corner, around Dayton. Okay, around the Dayton area. Yeah, I was in Cincinnati for a little while. So oh yeah, I had a little bit. I miss Skyline Chili. <laughs> you know that came about after I left. But oh, so. yeah, I go back. My stepmom still lives there. My dad's passed away, but my stepmom is still there. So we go there every now and then when we go to visit her. Well, I, I like to smell the chili, but I don't like the taste of it. But I really do like the Grater's ice cream. Have you had it? I have not. Oh, yeah, it's great. We, have, we go to Wichita to Dillon's to get it. They carry it at that grocery store. <laughs> well, must it, be good then. It is. It's very good. I love that side side story. Yeah. And Virginia to Ohio to Oklahoma. Yeah, my, mom, my mom was born and raised in Washington, D.C. 
And so when I was born in actually in Alexandria, Virginia, so just outside, I don't ever remember living there because, you know, they immediately, my dad was in the army and then he went to Japan and they came back and I'm not even sure how they ended up in Ohio. <laughs> it's just like my first recollection of where we lived. So I went from Ohio to Oklahoma or to Ardmore, Oklahoma, kind of a culture shock a little bit. It was because when we were in Ohio, when my mom remarried my stepdad, we lived on a dairy farm. And so that was, we were all city girls before then. And so it was a bit of a culture shock. And then when we moved to Ardmore, we moved I, you know, back in town, I'm like, all right, I'm, I'm done with the country life. <laughs> Somebody else can have the dairy. <laughs> so how many siblings do you have? I have two sisters, one older, one younger, and they both still live in the Ardmore area. Okay. So did either one of them come to OSU? No, neither yeah. one of them did. My, my youngest sister is an LPN and she got her um, degree, I think she did Murray State, and then my older sister owns a, a restaurant just outside of Ardmore. So, but all my kids were born and raised here, so. And how many children do you have? I have three children. Okay. And I was thinking about it, so, you know, this is the first raise that none of them are going to be here to help me. So my, my daughter still lives here in town, but she's expecting a baby in mid-September, her, her fourth and final, we hope, <laughs> or she hopes. And then um, my youngest son just moved to Boise, Idaho. Wow. And then my oldest son lives in Tulsa. He and his wife live in Tulsa. Gosh, I don't know. That's a little bit away. <laughs> I know. He just moved last year. It's, it's it's supposed to be pretty. I've seen pictures. It's beautiful, but it kind of hurt my mom heart that he's 24 hours away by car. <laughs> I can't just, like, jump in a car and drive to Dallas to see him. <laughs> so. Well, you came to Stillwater for college, mm -hmm. and you got married and just decided to, to stay. Yeah, I, I married um, a, a local boy, so he was born and raised here. And then when uh, we divorced, it was it was important to me that my kids stayed close to their dad. So, I mean, we co-parented great, and my kids had the best of both worlds. And we spent you know holidays together and birthdays, and so it was it, it was a fabulous place to raise a family. Yes. I love it here. So when you first came in '86, where did you live on campus? I lived in Bennett Hall. Okay. Before there was air conditioning. And I had actually, I just remember my room was in the basement and I'm like, I can't believe my mother left me here, was my first thought. <laughs> and so I put in for a transfer and by the, you know, three weeks later, by the time it came through to move to Wilhelm, I'm like, I've made so many friends. I'm like, I'll stay here if you get me out of the basement. Well, you know, 18 year old me had known better about the no, thought it through with the no air conditioning. I would have chose to stay in the basement where it was much cooler, yeah. but I moved up to the third floor and I loved it. It, it was a great experience. Did you get to have a window fan at least? Oh, yes. Okay. <laughs> it was on the third floor. You stick the windows open. You have to worry about crawling in or anything. <laughs> and a communal bathroom down the hall? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Did they have a cafeteria in, the, in it at that point? They did. And actually, at that point, it was like the training table for the athletes. So Good food then. Yeah. So they would. I had a 730 class, and that was about the time all of the football players were coming over from morning practice, so I would eat breakfast with several of them, and then those who had 7.30 classes, we'd all just walk to class together, <laughs> so it was good. I made some good friends that year. Were you a sports fan at that point? I was. I was. And still are? I still am. Yeah, I, this is one of the first things, um, this is one of the first things after I got divorced was buy my season football tickets again, because I could afford just one, but I couldn't afford for a family of five, so it's like, okay, we're going to do this again, and I've had them ever since. Wow. Yeah. Basketball or just football? Um, I don't have basketball season tickets, but I go to as many games as I can. And the baseball, the new baseball stadium is amazing. Been once, it is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah but the football is my my main, my my favorite. But well, and then you've seen some changes on campus, even in the stadium. Even oh from, yes. From eighty six, eighty seven. I mean. Yeah, it was what they used to call the old Rustolian Stadium. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, there's a lot of changes. Did you spend much time in the library? Um, no. You know, and it's kind of funny because one of my walks around campus a couple years ago, I actually went into the library and I'm like, this is the first time I've ever been in here. I never even came in here when I was in school. And it's like that's my might be why I'm not in school anymore. <laughs> well, then you want to miss the card catalog that's no longer there anymore either. So. Oh man! Yeah, we moved in '96. 
And I don't think it was there at that point either, but yeah, card catalogs were I, amazing, I, I thought. But. I loved them. I did the, um, I was library two years in high school, and I just loved the old tradition and just like, even like just reading a book still, I'm like, I have some on my Kindle, but I just want to like hold a book and read it. <laughs> yeah, the smell of a lot of books in one place. The library has a unique smell, I think. I you know I think that every time I walk between the library and um, what's the engineering building next to it, you know there's just that little walkway for it, and that's where the uh, like the exhaust rope comes out, and you walk by it. I, every time I'm like it smells like the library, it smells like books right in that little corridor. I'm glad to hear that. I've always thought that too. But yeah, <laughs> yes. that's what I think of every time. That's it. You get it's a familiar smell to those of us who work in the mm -hmm. <laughs> in the library. Yeah. So did you stay in Bennett this two years you were in? I did not. I moved into um, the Scholars and Apartments my second year, mm -hmm. which are no longer there. She laid toward those down right on the corner of um, Knobloch and Miller, and it's now the parking lot right behind Gallagher Ica where it curves around to Knobloch. Okay. They yeah. used to be right there on that corner, so they're not. We, we saw all of us old people at the race still refer to it as the Scholars Inn lot. When we're talking about where people are going to park, and you know, some of your kids like, I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> like, well, it's 6B, <laughs> it's the official lot number. Okay, so when did you get married? I got married in 88. 88. Okay, and then you were working for Lemon about? I went to work for him in 1997. Okay, so you were working there when the plane crash happened? Yes. Okay. Yes. Do you remember? That particular day, or I do well, you know, because it was that evening, and I was at home, and one of my girlfriends had come over. We were doing like a closet clean out, and it came on the news. I mean, and we we both just like sat on the end of my bed and just, just like, is this really happening? I mean, and, and at that point, I mean, I had other than just being a fan, I had no affiliation or connection to to anybody. But you know, as as we all know, I mean, it's just it's our family. It, People we don't know, I mean, it's just, they're, they're just ours. I mean, same way with, you know, the, when the other plane crash happened, and it's, you take it personally. Did you go to the memorial service? I did. Do you remember anything about it? Um, you know, I, re I remember the songs that were playing, you know, um, One More Day. I, I remember that. Um, I remember Harry Birdwell did an amazing job. And I remember um, Karen Hancock walking and holding teeny tiny little baby, baby Andy, and it's just kind of like, man, she's she's never gonna remember her dad. And that was just, it, I mean, especially as a mom at the time, it was, I couldn't imagine having to do that. So that those were like like my three really, really vivid things all these years later that still just kind of stick out to me. I remember some of that too, but, and then I remember the, the poem that Andre Williams read. Mm -hmm. that, that took a lot of, a lot of you know, courage and strength yeah. to stand up there and do that. He did. You know, he's come back to some of the, like when we have the family dinners, and he comes back as often as he can. He's been to a couple of the race days. He comes to you when we do the thing um, in January, when they have the for the basketball game. I mean, we, they try to do it as close to the anniversary of the plane crash as possible, and, and he's off. He, I don't know if he's missed one, now that I'm thinking about it. It seems like he's always just there. So, Well, then how did you get started with the run? Um, I had, at, the point, at that time, I had kind of like quit all of my volunteer things that I had going on. I mean, between my kids' PTA, and then I had been active in junior service league. Mm -hmm. And so it had been about six months or a year, and I was just, I needed a new service project. And a friend of mine, um, at the time I was a, a moderator on an OSU message board, on one of the, the sports boards, and one of the, the other moderators on it said, hey, I've got the perfect thing for you. He said that it involves the two things you love the most, volunteering and OSU sports. And so cool. he said, there, there's this meeting. He's like, it's just kind of an information meeting, just kind of like, can we do this kind of thing? And so it was in... Um, I'm kind of the Oak Club in Gallagher, and I, I knew Matthew Sheets was the only person I knew there, the one who, who told me about it. And at that time, I was also working for the OSU wrestling camps, and I was doing all of their like applications and registrations. And so I kind of got 
okay, this is one thing I think I could do. I could do the registrations for the race. And I had no idea what I was getting into. <laughs> but, you know, it was just, I, there was probably 50, 75 people at that meeting. And we're all just kind of like, you know, what's everybody's strengths and weaknesses? And do you think you can do this or this or this? And kind of like, do we really think we can pull this off? And um, it was it was interesting. So from the very beginning, I mean, you were there from the very, yes, very right. first race? From the very first race, wow. very first meeting. And it just kind of evolved into what it is now. I mean, I, the first race, like I so said, we had no idea what we were doing. And so the registration part was easy for me because I kind of had a grasp on how to do that. But at that point, we would like collect things from businesses and people to put in the, the race packets because we thought that that's what you were supposed to do. And it was exhausting <laughs> trying to stuff all of those bags and the t-shirts and this or that. And that first race, we were up because we did registration in the main lobby of Gallagher. And we were there until probably two in the morning making these race Day bags for people to pick up the next day that mm -hmm. had read in the meal. We had we were up at six o'clock and anything's ready for the race. And I mean, we were hoping for a couple hundred people, and we had over 800 the first race. And um, a friend of mine that worked in our office for a while, she she had volunteered as well that year. And we kind of looked at each other when the when the gun went off, started the race, and went, we actually did it. I mean, it's like, it's like, whatever happens, happens now. There's no more fires to put out. It's like, this is going to happen. <laughs> so it, it was good. It was exhausting that first year, but. And you decided to do it a second time. A second time and a third time and a fourth time. And and we have such an amazing core group of people right now that have just, and, and a lot of them have been involved since the very beginning. Um, Jason, I think, was a course marshal the first year. And yeah, and so, you know, and he is an amazing numbers guy and he's more organized than the rest of us put together. And so I am thrilled with the, um, the transformation that, that his role in the race has taken on because he just kind of like, he, he keeps us all on track, which, you know, sometimes with, with life and work and other things, I mean, it's hard to like, Oh yeah, I need to do X, Y, and Z to get ready for, because, because the race is coming up in two months and have you, you know, lined up the food or the water, you know, things like that. And so it's, he's really good about keeping us on one task and being the numbers guy that he is. Registration was a perfect fit for him. <laughs> and he has it down to, it runs so efficiently, better than we could have ever dreamed at that first or even second race. It's just kind of like, I gladly turn that over to him. <laughs> and so it, it was hard for me those, you know, second, third, fourth years, because, you know, the first year we did, everybody did everything and it was exhausting. And so once we started getting a good core group of volunteers, it was hard for me to like give up control of some things because it's like, I'm like, but you know, somebody told me and said, people have volunteered their time. You need to let them do something, deal. And so I just gradually taken, I feel like my role is about this big now and it used to be this big. and. I'm okay with it. <laughs> so what do you do now? Um, I do a lot of stuff leading up to race day. I design our t-shirts and get those printed. Um, like like the race day operations. I always tell people, you know, tell everybody else, you get people here and I'll have something for them to do. So, you know, I get the, the finish line area set up and organized with the, the food and the water. Um, we have the OSU health services will usually come and volunteer towards the, the finish line. So we'll get them set up in the medical tent. Uh, you know, getting the porta potties lined up, which, you know, is one of those things about you don't it, think yeah. about it, but, but but you gotta do those things. And um, I coordinate with the city of Stillwater and OSU PD as far as getting, you know, we have to get a special events permit to, to have the race. And then we have to work with the OSU and Stillwater PD as far as closing down streets and the street department to, to cone off streets and pick things up behind the runners. And, so I do all of that. Like all those phone calls and arrangements. <laughs> but you know, it, and again, it's it's kind of the same system every year. So it's it, it, it doesn't seem difficult to me anymore. But if I ever get to have to turn it over to somebody else, I mean, it, it, there'll be some explaining. <laughs> you have to keep a start of procedures manual. Yeah, you know, we keep saying that. And we, I think Jason's closest we have to a procedures manual. I just kind of like have it 
mentally on in my mental calendar okay i need to do this and this and this and this and i'll go back to last year's notes okay well, so what time did i call so and so they keep a calendar or i some something something i have like a little notebook and i just keep adding to it every year but i i need to make a calendar just in case you know something catastrophic happens some year and i can't be here so so how early in the cycle do you start some of this? Um, you know, usually when races are in April, we start, we like really kick things off in January. To, I mean, and it's only four months ahead of time, but it's one of those things where we have done it so often, we kind of know that the time frame of everything. Mm -hmm. And so we try to have like the special events permits lined up and, and certified, you know, six to eight weeks ahead of time. Because we have to make sure that there's no no road construction that that would you know hinder our our race route which we've kept it the same for many many years now thank goodness <laughs> thank goodness um but then like sean mccabe is our race director and he and he has been from the very beginning and he does he's not only does an amazing job and he's just kind of quiet behind the scenes and but he um has worked to get it certified with the u.s track and field so that it's, I tell people all the time, if you're one of those people that needs like points or whatever they do to run marathons, we're a qualifier for that. <laughs> and we're also the, like, I forget how it's worded. It's like the designated 10K for the state of Oklahoma. Because they have like, I, I think it's the, the same organization that chooses, you know, like, like the Oklahoma City Marathon is like the Oklahoma, the designated marathon for the state of Oklahoma. But our, our 10K has that designation. By whoever makes that, and I'm not sure who it is. Well, have you participated in it, or you're too busy on the other side? You know, I keep saying I'm going to. At least I a just, fun run. Yeah, and it's just can't. Do it. No, I think Jason has threatened me if I have. He just kind of so, but I have been able to the last couple of years. Um, Charles Cameron works at the OSHA Foundation, and he's one of those people that I mean, he's so good and willing to help that if I felt we were underutilizing him and I didn't want him to leave. And so I have, I get everything lined up as far as, you know, the food and everything. But on race day, I turned the the finish line and set up stuff all over to him. So he's kind of, you know, we kind of put everything in the same place every year, but he's in charge of if there's, if there's an issue or timing or something like that. And I have the luxury then to just get on a golf cart and, and drive around and check out other parts of the race course and cheer people on and which is I don't think I've done like the last couple of years because I was just kind of been stuck at the finish and running around and it's it's nice. So when you say set up finish line, what does that entail? Um, well, we have a timing company that comes yeah. out of um, Kansas and they actually both of them used to run cross country here with, with Sean McCabe. Sean also ran cross country here. And so um, it's Manhattan, I think it's Manhattan Racing Company. So they come and set the big finish line with the banner and everything, the timing mats. But then we set up, um, we use bike racks. So we basically like make corrals to kind of like guide people where we want them to go once they cross the finish line. We have volunteers there to give give them medals and water. And we've got the medical tent right there. And then, you know, in that area, we also have the, the food, which um, Roger Fry at... It's not home, or it was homeland now. It was food pyramid before, and before that, it was Albertsons. But they donate all of our, our game day snacks. Mm -hmm. So they work together with some of their vendors, and then they order the, the bananas. And Stillwater Medical Center donates a good portion of our water now. And so we've got that set up at the finish line with, you know, the, the cold water and the snacks. And so we get that all set up, and the, the awards area is all things that have to be set up and ready by, like, 7 30 on race day <laughs> have a microphone i suppose so you need electricity um yeah the stuff we do right there at gallagher we can plug in mm -hmm. too but like we use a generator down towards the start line and then the finish line they use a generator because we'll have music playing at the finish line and usually we have somebody um oh nate deagleman said the last couple of years and he he's so fun but we'll give him a microphone at the finish line and they have a computer set up there so he can, it'll show what somebody's bib number is and who it is. And so he can call somebody by name and cheer them on when they're finishing and, you know, yell, yell at their name as they cross the finish line. So 
that personal touch. Yes, it's a lot of fun, <laughs> and he loves it. And Pistol Pete's around for for some photos, photo he, ops. Yeah, Pistol Pete is he's there before the race, and then usually he, he's there for some towards the fin, like the early finishers. Um, you know, we've had the, the Palm Girls in the cheer squad. The basketball team comes out. They they usually will participate. That the coaches and runners. Uh, we did one year have Pistol Pete run the 5K with his head on. Yes. Oh no. The, the full thing. Oh. <laughs> and so I'm like, man, yeah. if he can do it, surely I can walk it or something. <laughs> so somebody asked me the day, like, well, did he run the whole thing? And I said, well, he finished. I don't, I don't know if he ran the whole thing, but he finished. He might have needed the medical tent afterwards. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. What has been so much? Has people actually made use of the medical tent? I mean, um, any you know, there, we've only had like one incident, like in an early race where it was like a, a medical emergency type thing. Other than that, it's just like blisters or sick to their stomach or, you know, they you know, tripped and cut their ankle or, I mean, it, it's just really, really minor. There are no twisted ankles or broken arms. Exactly. Huh? So, but I mean, we have, you know, we tell our people, volunteers that are stationed on the course, you know, if you see somebody in medical distress, I mean, we, we can't remove them from the course. So we have to call 911 and have to send an ambulance out. But, you know, if you see someone in medical distress and they're not going to stop, I mean, just call us because we're going to send somebody out to check on them. But that's why the, the health services um, folks will look for that at the finish line too. As people finish, like, especially, you know, when it's been hotter on some years. And this year with it being in, in August, you know, we're really vigilant about, you know, checking for, for heat issues as people are finishing. Especially older people. <laughs> you know, some of those younger people will just, they'll, they'll push and push and push until they're True. about to collapse. And I'm like, it's not worth it. <laughs> yeah. Have you looked at the 10-day forecast? I don't know what it's supposed to be. Um, hot. Hot. I think the low that morning is like 69. Oh, so, and then I think the high is going to be in the 90s somewhere. So, but it's finished by 10, 10:30. Yeah, the so the 5K kicks off at 8:30. So, it shouldn't be too horrible. No, this is and hopefully the humidity will be bad. That is, that's awful. That's far <laughs> apart. Yeah, because we've only had one year we're poured. We've been blessed with great weather, and it was three or four years ago and. It rained and rained and rained. And so we we're kind of, at it's first one we had come up with like a, a contingency plan. And so we visited with um, athletics, like what what is your guideline if it rains? And and I didn't know this until then that there's all these sirens around campus. And if there's a lightning strike within eight miles, it's almost like an air horn type thing out by the um, sports fields and everything. So you know, if you hear that, then you have to pause for, for 30 minutes. Well, with us, as long as there was no lightning within eight miles when the race started, and we've just told people, if you hear this, I mean, this is what will happen if you hear it on campus. And at that point, you're responsible for your own safety. You can stop, you can finish, you can run through it. But at that, once the race starts, you have to pay attention for yourself. And we, I don't think we ever had any lightning that year, but it's the same day. They had a junior day event going on in Gallagher. And so everybody wanted to park as close as they could to any course, I usually will, my favorite spot is right on the corner of Athletic and Knobloch, where they come down and make the turn to go to the finish line, because that's where like all the good competition kicks in, like the, the 10 year old kid's gonna be outrun dad and everybody's afterburners kick on that corner. And we were in like this much water standing up. It was, it was pitiful. <laughs> Probably funny in some ways too. Yeah, you know, we had, we had more people show up, I mean, a lot of people had registered, but we had more people who actually showed up and ran that day than I was anticipating because I thought, oh, people are going to... And it's probably one of my favorite races just because we had, you know, all of our volunteers still showed up. Most of the runners still showed up. I'm like, those are the people who are coming out because they're going to they're gonna help keep the promise. Yeah. They care, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And, you know, there were so many that the families, so many of them are there on race day and... If you don't know who they are, they just kind of, kind of mix in. But it's, it, it's a great day, and and they are amazing about you know telling our volunteers how much they appreciate them coming out and helping and and, and celebrating the, the lives of their their loved ones. 
I've seen some pictures where it would have like team. Yeah. Uh, team Hancock or Tim. Yeah. Team whatever they a, a lot of them do do nice fa touch. family shirts and so we'll they'll design those on their own. And it, it's always fun to see if they come up with. <laughs> yeah, and there's other groups that you know like that that have, you know, had either worked with like Will Hancock or Kendall Durfee that they'll they'll make their own T shirts. And it's just it, it's it's just great to see those people come out and this year was the first year we did the lights on Stillwater for the race. And so it's um, Carrie Alexander and I were both there and it was so nice. There there's so many people that didn't know about the run. They had no idea what it was, you know, of course the younger people and but there were some other people that combined, you know, that they volunteered every year or that, that they knew this family or that family and it it was great to just kind of like, okay, this this is why we do it. Fifteen years ago. Mm -hmm. When they first started did they Imagine it would be still going 15 years later. We, or is it no, year by year thing? I, I did because I thought, oh my gosh, too much. A lot of work. <laughs> it was a lot of work, and, but it just kind of all, all fell in place. And the, the more we did it, kind of snowballed. And the people who would help us just wanted to keep helping us. And it, it's like, okay, well, we, we can do this. So, you know, we, we don't have an anticipated end date. Like, we're going to just only do this for 20 years. and. So as long as it's still still working and people are still willing to come out, we'll just keep doing it. Well, was it, it becoming a fundraiser in in the, the thoughts at that point or just a way of celebrating? We always knew that we would, no, it was always kind of a fundraiser. It's just a matter of who we're going to give our funds to okay. is what. Um, and so, I mean, university counseling services was kind of an easy, easy pick for us because you know, um, Dr. Burks was telling me that when the when the plane crash happened, the material they had to hand out on campus was just like, we literally just had to like copy things on colored paper and just hand it out to people. She's like, we didn't have any, any resources. And so, you know, and they, they were such an integral part of keeping the rest of us together, you know, on, on campus and the team. And so, you know, with our donation to them every year, they've been able to you know, increase their library and some of their biofeedback stuff and get counselors specifically certified in grief counseling. And so it's, it was just kind of a no-brainer for us to get this, this is what we're going to do. And it just, it's, it's good for the community. It's good for the university. And it's just, it, it helps everyone. Well, do you know how you, how you decided on the 20000 the, the the amount? Um, I think it's what we could afford. Okay, well, that's fair <laughs> enough. So, but no, I, I, I really don't. I mean, that's that's more of a Jason Poe number question, but because, you know, we put all of, our, all of our money goes through the OSHI Foundation, and we, we set it up because we wanted to do the pick and match, which we, we finally, you know, were able to, to complete the requirements for that. But we just thought, you know, if, if we can't do anything else every year, we want to do quality events. We don't care if we make money because we're giving it all back. But we just, it was important to us to, to remember the why we were doing it. And, you know, if if we only have, you know, 100 people sign up, well, we're going to set up a race for those 100 people because it's just, it, it's important that we just continue to, to keep the promise. And there's, you know, so many young kids on campus now that weren't even born when that happened. When you think about that's true. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And coming freshman for sure. Yeah. And so it was that that's part of the, the fun free feat for me the other night on the lights on Stillwater is we could educate so many young people about, well, do you know what, what we are and what we're doing? And and a lot of them were like, No, I'm like, I just need twenty seconds of your time and then you go on to the next booth. <laughs> so that, that we're about that as much as anything, just keeping it keeping it fresh and in everybody's minds and then did you do it do you do i don't think you do but i'll ask anyway the next plane crash the 20 2011 mm -hmm. did we add, add that group to your we had something on our t-shirts for them that year and and we discussed it but it, and they kind of do they they have like a call term they kind of do their own thing okay. and it was one of those things to where i mean we, we, we were obviously we we're very mindful and respectful and mournful of that but we just made the decision just stay true to our original 
our, our original tin, which is kind of sad. <laughs> it's like, you know, we're, we're getting too well versed on how to handle tragedy around here. Yes, and then the parade, homecoming parade mm -hmm. came along too. Yeah. Did that change any of the things that were um, the You know, that year we were a little more diligent at, obviously, at intersections and we had a little bit more, you know, you know, police coverage at those type things. And we worked, you know, more with our volunteers on, you know, if you see anything, I mean, obviously we don't want you to like, you can't stop being the car, but you know, just, just pay attention to your surroundings and the people. And, and that was another year where we, you know, added a, another memorial thing onto our race t-shirts. So it was, I, I told Jason once, man, I was like, man, I'm getting tired of adding orange ribbons to our shirts. <laughs> do you have all, a shirt from all 15 races? I do not. I, you know, I mean, through the years, it just kind of, I, I think I, it would be interesting to see. Yeah, I mean, I can probably find a picture of all of them, but. <laughs> well, that would work too, I guess. It's, you know, I mean, and one of the things we learned, you know, earlier we were born more like cost effective and, you know, the runners would have white t-shirts and then we tried to do a different color for the volunteers just so they would stand out in the crowd. And, you know, a couple of years, I, they gave me a lot of grief because I think one year I did a blue shirt, maybe a yellow for the volunteers. And everybody's like, what in the world? And so when we, um, at that time, we had a different timing company. And so when we got connected with Manhattan Racing Company, one of the first things they said is, you need to change your shirts. Like, if you want people to wear your shirts, which is free advertising, you need to do a better shirt. And so we, we changed them. And the, the very first year that we changed them, it was a really soft gray shirt. Those are the most well-loved shirts and the ones I see the absolute most of. So we, we've kept true to that color scheme. Like we just do gray, dark gray, because I mean, gray, gray looks, every, everybody can wear gray. <laughs> so we try to be mindful of all shapes and sizes on, okay, what kind of shirt are we getting? But those, we, we stay with the same brand, that really soft cotton brand and it's worked well. How far ahead do you have to order those? And you, um, can you guess that numbers or you wait till you know? We, we just ordered them about two weeks ago. So okay. about a month ahead of race day because we have some some packet pickup stuff that happens before leading up to the race. But I'll usually start working with James Cosley's designed all of our shirts. And so I'll start working with him usually in like November or December when we have the April races. That way, you know, when we do the big launch for the, for the race stuff in January, we've got a t-shirt design ready to go. Okay. And then, um, well, since James doesn't have his print shop anymore, because he sold it um, back to Dupree's, so Dupree's prints, prints all of our shirts now. Which is local, so. Which is local, and, and James still designs them. He's still in town, he's just not, he's just trying to get out of that business, but he says, I will design your shirts for as long as you will let me, so. And then just order some extras for people who register that the day mm -hmm. of. Yeah, Jason will do a, um, like you'll look at what we have, like when we're ordering shirts, how many runners do we have registered right now? And then historically, how many more register between now and race day? And like I said, he's our numbers guy. So he does the percentages and it's like, okay, I think we need to order this many, but they, they will keep everything. So if we need to order more like the week of the race, if we have like an astronomical like rational registration, they can always print us more shirts. Quick, okay. Yes. Which helps it's local too. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Definitely helps with that. So say the, the like the night before in the morning of what, what's going through here? Um, you, you know, thinking? I'm not nearly as nervous about it as I used to be. You know, it used to be leading up to, to the races. It was just kind of like, okay, we've got to do this, 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 and this. And there were some nights we wouldn't, when we started doing the packet pickup in the stadium in the mornings, we wouldn't leave there until midnight or so by the time we got registration closed down and everything packed up and moved and we're, we're out there by nine o'clock now. So, cause on, so, so night before the race, the, the day before, I'll say the day before, cause we start, um, packet pickup and registration at one o'clock and it goes till eight, but Jason gets that all set up in there with it. We have a lot of volunteers that will come. People can either just pick up if they've already registered or if they need to register that day. Um, usually during the day, I am you know, going and picking up the, the food from from uh, home my mail. I'm like, I wouldn't say Albertsons. Do that, you know, they'll deliver our water that day. 
the um, truck services on campus will then you know, deliver tables and chairs. And so a lot of what I do that day is just kind of like coordinate, okay, where are we going to put this until we need to get it out tomorrow morning? And then um, that evening, it's usually around 6, we host a family dinner, which we do in the student union every year. And so Jason and I will usually get on a golf cart and go over to the student union and, and have dinner and catch up with everybody, and which is, which is so great because a lot of them don't see each other except for that one time a year. And, you know, like, like my, my boys have, my kids have just grown up with this. And so it's so fun to see so many of those families and like their kids growing up and their grandkids and it's just like a family reunion. And we're just, we're happy that they let us be part of it. It's really neat. I would think so. Cheerios too. Yeah, it's, you know, I mean, and, and Dr. Burks comes every year. Um, there, there's several like non-family people that are family and we obviously include in that. Um, Dr. Halligan would come when he was, here and then you know, um, Burns Hargis would come, and this year we've been invited President Shrum, and okay. so I mean we always. It, it's important to us that they always know that no matter who's in charge, that they're still part. Of, they're, they're still part of this, even if they're they're brand new into the fold. So how much longer do you think you'll do? Um, you know, a couple of years ago, I was like, I don't know, <laughs> but you know it. Because life just gets so busy, and it's just kind of like, you know, I, I don't ever want to not do a good job at it. And there's some years I've just been so overwhelmed with everything else. It's just like, okay, maybe this is my last year. And then, you know, but, but then you'll you know, go to that family dinner in January and start having meetings. And you're like, no, I can do this. And, and honestly, my part now is it's not that hard. It's not that hard. So maybe you got it down to a science. Exactly. <laughs> yep. So any any hiccups? Um, that you, know, you forgot to do that you needed to do. <laughs> <laughs> we we've been pretty fortunate that I mean I can't think of. Well, that's great. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, probably about the biggest thing that we've learned along the way is we need way more directional signs than we think we do, because we've learned that runners will just show up to run a race and not have any idea where they're going. They don't look at the course ahead of time, and so there, there's been a couple of years that we've had people run off course and then you know obviously they finish like in the top three and it kind of disqualifies them because we well, didn't you didn't run the right course so we we have learned that lesson the hard way so we've actually this, this year did all new signage which is much more clear and, it, and we have volunteers at those corners like the major ones like where the 5 paint 10k split but there's always somebody so it's too bad you can't do colored straps like yes or <laughs> prints or something well, and we've we've got like yard signs now that we that we put up, but in a lot of years, I mean, someone would go by with like the orange street paint and like spray paint on the on the street. But when you've got that still would work. Yeah, no, not when you got you know just kind of like go turn here. Yeah, when I mean, you got a thousand people running in the same place, so yeah, we, we we have learned the hard way to to make the important turns very clear to the runners because they don't know where they're going. <laughs> so yeah, and you stay around to see the see the finish and the award ceremony mm -hmm. too yeah that's probably the fun part too. yeah you, usually part by the time they're starting and wrapping up the award ceremony i'm usually working with you know my, my crew people getting things torn down and put away because it's usually the same day as the spring football game and i was gonna get out of there yeah so we got to get out of the way <laughs> but but athletics is amazing they, they work really well with us and just kind of give us our leeway and they, there was one year they had because on normal race year, we're going to wrap up everything and be completely done with the awards and out there by like 1130-ish. And they had the spring game scheduled for noon. And I'm like, can we just get it another hour, 30 minutes? I mean, just, we, we need just a little bit more time. <laughs> and they, I think they moved it back to 1230 or something, but I'm like, I, I can work with that. But to guarantee I'm going to be out of your way. I need this much more time. And they accommodated you. They did. That, they, that's good. Yeah. And we're actually... Um, working pretty closely with them before um, 2020 knocked us out of the running for the for the race, but with, with athletics to try to make that third Saturday in April like an event day for the for the entire campus. You know, yes, we're football's always going to have spring game on the same days to raise, and and we have to do ours on the third Saturday because we're between the Red Belt Classic and the Oklahoma City Memorial Marathon. So a lot of people use our race as a training. So 
we have to choose ours between other major races in the state. And so, you know, athletics and football have created that, you know, we're all just going to kind of do everything on the same day. There's usually baseball that day. And we're, we're hoping that there is going to be in the future, like, you know, shut down Hall of Fame and do the block party and, you know, maybe eventually get to where we, you know, like have, host a concert or something like that. But we're all just kind of trying to work together. We're going to co-brand, so which everybody is using the, the same slogan and the, the same catchphrase for that weekend. Well, that would be ha handy for our visitors coming into town, too. Absolutely. Coming the day of it. Well, you know, and, and Christy weekend. Morrison at, at Visit Stillwater has said that that's one of, it's kind of like, like a spring homecoming especially when you have, you know, the football game and everything. She's like, it's one of our biggest weekends all year other than, like, homecoming yeah. weekend. Because there's so many other things. There's usually the library has their book sale that, um, that weekend, the Arts and Heritage Festival downtown. There's, there's so many other things that are going on in town that weekend that if you're trying to find a time you know, to come to Stillwater to hang out, it's, it's the weekend to be here. <laughs> you wonder if they chose those dates because of the race? Um, I think it just kind of like, I don't think so. I think that like, like the one downtown, the arts festival has always been on that weekend because they're kind of like us. They have to, to schedule theirs between like, you know, the Oklahoma City Arts Festival. And so they have to schedule theirs around, around other big events in the state like that. We're just fortunate that we all have the same weekend. <laughs> yeah, well, hopefully it's going back to April this next, this yes, next year. That is our plan. Goes as planned. That is our plan. And it changed, I mean, it's virtual last year. Hybrid this year, I guess. Yeah, well, we, we introduced the virtual race the year before that, or a couple years before that. Okay. Because people had asked for that option, and it's not, nothing we'd ever done. And so we'd already had, you know, a few people already doing that. And so then last year, when we had to go all virtual, it was easy for us because we already had a plan for it. And okay. so... So that, you know, going forward, we'll always offer the the, the virtual race and the in-person race. So you have someone that's really good at technology to handle that sort of you that, know, internet or... That would be a Jason. It would be Jason. Okay. <laughs> yep, Jason. I didn't ask him that. Okay. Yeah, Jason handles all of our, our registration. So if you... And he, and he does the Facebook. Okay. And then for social media, I mean, I, I do the Twitter part and... My youngest son just recently set us up an Instagram account because that's what um, Stephen Howard at, um, in the athletic department told us that the young people are going to look at Instagram. You need an Instagram. So I've kind of inherited our Instagram account as well. And Jay, I think Jason must just sit at home on a Sunday and like schedule all the post, Facebook posts for that for that week because I'll just see them just pop up and I'm like, how do you have time to do this in the middle of the day? <laughs> it's like, I don't have time to do that with my day job. Well, most people would, but. Yes. So, so the, you we, get efficient at, at it after a while too, I guess. Yeah. I mean, we kind of kid each other. Like one year, I'm like, okay, I think I can do this better than you. Like, I think I can make the Twitter better than your Facebook. And he's like, really? <laughs> <laughs> so how long have you been co-chairs from, from the get go? Um, well, Hey, not the first year. So yeah, you know. I mean that the second year is when I stepped into a co-chair okay. position, and then um, because I mean at that point I was like doing registration and the operation stuff and the t-shirts and just kind of like, oh, and so then um, you know Jason took on registration and just he is such an amazing asset. I mean not not only to to us. But on, on campus and to his friends and family, I mean, he is just one of the kindest, most giving people I know. It's like, oh, I want to be like Jason when I grow up. <laughs> and organized. He's a spreadsheet. <laughs> he is ridiculously organized. <laughs> I mean, and you need someone like that. We this. do, because I'm not that, I mean, I kind of like keep a, like a running tally going in my head. I'm just kind of like, I need this, this, and this, and I'll... I'll make myself a note and then I'll put it on my phone to remind me and, and Jason's like by the way according to my sheet have you done this this and this and I'm like yes <laughs> yes I just didn't tell you I did <laughs> did you touch base by phone or just you know once, um, once a week or once a day we, we you know I mean and, and Jason and I have, have become really good friends because I've met some I have some of the most amazing friends that I've met because of this and, and Jason's one of them and so 
I rarely lose touch with Jason, even if it is like in the race off season. I mean, we're, we're, we're touch of base pretty, pretty frequently, just, you know, an email here or there or a text or, you know, like with the t-shirt designs, we do those far ahead of time. And it used to be, I would like to come up with the initial design and pick a couple of color options. And then I would send out to everybody on the steering committee and it just got to where it's like, okay, we're, we're no. <laughs> we're not doing that. <laughs> so pretty much I, I do all the initial work and then I'll run it by Jason and he'll like, so he and I will tweak it together and then present it to everybody else. It's kind of like nobody else gets a vote anymore. <laughs> well, how often does the team planning team meet here like during the year for like once the race is over until the next one? Uh, we, you know, once the race is over, of course, this year will be a little different, but yeah. well, we'll, we'll meet again in January is when we'll have like our first. Okay. We usually have like one big meeting right at the beginning, kind of like, you know, what worked last year, what didn't work. Do we need to, and Jason sends out a survey to all of our runners after the fact just like hey you know good bad and different we just we just need to know what you like what do you think we need to improve on what would you like to see changed and so we'll go for all of that and just kind of get the ball rolling but the, this year all of our meetings were by zoom we didn't do any in-person meetings mm -hmm. and and those actually worked really well because with the exception of jason and i and a couple of others we've got some of our core group lives in tulsa oklahoma city and, it, and it's just hard to get everybody together Saves time. Mm -hmm. It does. So it's my it's my preference moving forward that we do that. <laughs> if I get a vote, <laughs> so you get some of this. You get time at work to do some of this, a little bit of this. Oh yeah, yeah. No, Scott is amazing work because he's all about community projects, and he's always been involved in several things. I mean, and so yeah, if I need to to leave for a meeting or leave early or whatever, it's just I I, just, I don't even ask him. <laughs> he just it's kind of like when my kids were little. I mean, we're so family oriented. It's like, you know, if I need to bring them to work with me for a day, if I need to leave early because somebody's sick, it's just, it's probably one of the easiest jobs as far as flexibility that I that I've had. So no, no regrets coming to Stillwater then. No, no, no regrets. <laughs> have you been to the side in Colorado? I have. I went. Um, I went once. My there's a couple of gals that um, I set with our season tickets together for football, and we were meeting a whole nother group at, when Colorado was still in the Big 12, and we were going to the game in Colorado. And my youngest son, um, who was gay at the time, he's 26 now, he was like 12. And I only remember this because we drove out there, and so it was just the four of us. We got we drove halfway, got a room, and he would not sleep in the same bed with me because we just got one room with two beds and he's like i'm too old for that <laughs> and I'm like whatever so we it was i'm glad i went once but i don't know if i want to go again because yeah. it was been yet. It, it was very cold that day but it's it's like the, the closer we would get to it it was just kind of it was very somber and, and it might have just been because it was so cold and windy and you get out there and it's just not i mean just howling cold winds but it was one of the things where we didn't plan it that way, but the four of us, like, it's like nobody talked the closer we got. And then, you know, once we finally got back in the car, we were probably a good 20 minutes away before anybody's like, okay. <laughs> but it was, yeah, it's very impactful. If you get a chance to go, I, I recommend going, going once, but, and I was the same way with the Oklahoma City um, Memorial Me down there. I went once and I'm glad I went, but I don't think I want to go again. Me too. <laughs> I, feel, I feel you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. So for next year, it'll be full speed ahead. We're hoping it's come January. So we won't have much of a break. No, but that's okay. Break. So were you on the committee when they decided to do the scholarships? When they um, trying to do that. Yeah, I, and and again, yeah, Jason set all that up because. So, because, I mean, with his, he does a lot of that through his job anyway. So it was easy for him to, like, put the scholarship packet together and the wording and how it's supposed to be. And so, you know, on the scholarship committee, we've had, we'll have, you know, one family member. Karen Hancock usually does it. Um, somebody from the OSU Foundation. Somebody from our race committee. Um, Susie Burks. Did, uh, did she do it? I, I didn't do it last year because I was out of town when we had to have the deadline. But... 
So I, the last four or five years, I have been the one from the race that represents the race. And it's... So you get to read all of them. I do get to. And, and, it, and it's interesting. So some of these young people's like, like goals and ambitions and what led them to do, go into that field. And sometimes I'm sad we only have 10 to give away. Because so I, I just kind of like have my own little system. I'll, even I have them electronically, I print them all off because I want to make notes on everything. <laughs> and I'll just, I'll make three piles, yes, no, and maybe. <laughs> so, you know, I'll get have my definite, you know, two or three yeses. So I'll move those aside. And then I'll start going back through the maybes. And man, when it gets down to where you only have one more left to, for, for a yes vote, and you've got to go through 10 of them, then you're just like, okay, so how nitpicky do I need to get? I mean, did they give us everything we asked for? Did they answer the questions? And it's, I, I just, I hate cutting people out. <laughs> was it initially 10? I mean, 10 from the get-go? Mm -hmm. It's always it been 10 $1,000 scholarships. And we're hoping as it progresses and, um, you know, with the pick and match that we'll be able to either increase our number of scholarships or the dollar amount of what we give to the, the 10 that we, that we choose. I had figured with the number 10 being so significant mm -hmm. and everything. I'm just curious. Yeah. So, I, yeah, I imagine we'll probably always keep it at. at so, how long have they been doing that? Has it been this, like eight or nine years? Or yeah. Longer? I want to say it's somewhere. Is, this is the 10th cohort. I think we might be rolling so, into our 10th. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Our, our 10th class of scholarships. Have you gone back to check to see what's happened with some of the early ones? I have not, but there's a couple of years ago, we opened it up to where you could reapply for it even if you had won it before, okay. which initially it was just kind of like it, you know, if one and that's it. Yeah. But it's such a, a narrow field that we're focusing on who we want to give the scholarships to that we were kind of, I mean, there, there's one year we had 10 scholarships given. I think we only had nine applications because we, you couldn't reapply for it. And so we're like, okay, we're just going to, can going to re, if you've, want it before you can certainly reapply for it again. Is grief counseling one of the main mm -hmm. skills you're looking for? Um, a master's or graduate level student in with a focus on, on grief counseling. You, but you, I mean, and things I've learned is grief is so many different things. I mean, it's your, your boyfriend broke up there, your dog died, or your parents are getting divorced, or you're just homesick. I mean, it, it encompasses or you plunged it, plunged your science class yeah. or whatever. I mean, yeah. it, 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 it encompasses so many more things than just like you, your mom or dad died or something like that, which, you know, I, I never really thought about that before this, that it is just, there, there's so many things in life that are some level of, of grief that we all go through. Well, speaking of grief then, when you got involved with the run, had you experienced a loss like that? Was that part of your? I not really. I mean, not anything like tragic or unexpected. Okay. I mean, other than you know, like my, my grandparents had passed away, but no, not really. It wasn't part of why you got involved in. No, no. I mean, other than the fact that I felt like you know, it was per it felt personal to me just because they, it was part of the OSU family, and you know, I would tell people all the time, I mean. Once you're in, you're in for life. <laughs> and we're just going to take care of you and lift you up and cheer you on or whatever whatever you need. Well, when you look back over the last 15 years with the race, are there any of this, oh, memory should just pop out? Um, you know, I mean, my, my biggest one is the first year when, when you know, the, the gun went off. I mean, I, I almost cried. I thought, we, we actually pulled this off. Are you kidding me? And, of course, you know, the, the year that it rained, um, our our tenth year was was kind of a big one because it's like it was one of those wow we've really been doing this for ten years and we had um, that was our largest race we had twenty two hundred runners that year and so you know we we always strive for two thousand but we're happy with like sixteen or seventeen hundred and this year we're just hoping to break a thousand <laughs> in person or virtual or both um, it all counts the same but it all counts the same. okay I think last year, I mean on years that we haven't had or that we've had the in-person race and the virtual race, we'll have probably 50 to 100 people that do the virtual race. Of course, you know, last year everybody did, and 
which is kind of sad because we had our memorial t-shirt last year for Eddie Sutton. And so, you know, we, we contacted and visited with the Sutton family about can we use his signature on the shirt because, you know, it's year he got into the Hall of Fame. So we um, included all that. So we had, you know, the, the same signature that's on the basketball court was on the bottom of our shirts. And, you know, we put, you know, that, you know, Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame class of, of 2020 because, I mean, it was important to us that, that we remembered that because, you know, he had passed away and it was, he was so instrumental in keeping everybody together that he forgot to keep himself together. <laughs> and it was just, he it was very hard on him. It was, it was. And, and God bless him. He would come back every year. He'd be there on race day. And he would just, he never wanted it to be about him. And so he would, you know, he would take pictures of people, but he just kind of wanted to sit back and, and watch and take it in. And he would always, even, you know, later on when he was in the wheelchair, when we do the gift counseling services on um, in January at halftime of the basketball game, he would always still want to go out on the court. So we would have somebody go to the sidelines and get him and, and push him out on the court with us. And, yeah. I've witnessed a lot of those, and I think those are always touching too. Yeah. So he, he, he was a big cheerleader for of what we were doing. And and he was, he, he always said he just wanted to be the honorary chairperson, but he didn't ever want any of the credit, and he didn't ever want it to be about him. Or well, were there any of the ones, in, like in the immediate family and the ones on the peripheral of all of that that did not want the race to happen? Um, you don't have to say who, but was there any, any pushback from You anyone? know, there, there's a couple of families that, um, it's just hard for them to come back. Right. And, and I understand that. Sure. Um, you know, and you know, there's, you know, a couple of times that we just, we, we lost track of that we, which we've just recently in couple last couple of years have, um, it was Daniel Lawson's family. You know, all the correspondence we have was going to his mom. Well, you know, she had moved in this and that, and she's since passed away. And Daniel's sister was looking through, going through all of her mom's stuff and found, you know, some emails that we'd sent and everything and reached out to Jason. And last year, I think it was last year, his, um, some of his family came back for, for one of the games. And we had, somebody had tucked away and like, an old storage closet somewhere was was Daniel's jersey, and we were able to give that to him. That's yeah. So, of course, you know, obviously, um, your and Falstrom's father has never been able to make it, but he he's one that he's kept in touch as he could. I mean, he, he's getting older. Um, and Timber Mill's wife would volunteer every year, and she she always worked on registration. But she, she kind of, she never wanted people to know who she was. She was just very, it, it was important to her to be there too. And so it was, it, things like that are just, yeah. it's why we do it. Did she ever run to participate in it? No, Did no. Did any, well, Karen, I know they said Karen does, so. Yeah, um, yeah and, and like the Weiberg families and a lot of them will, um, um, Pat Noyes, I mean, they'll, a lot of them will make their own t-shirts and you know and, and some of them just want to like be there and participate and just kind of just kind of take it all in day of celebration yep yeah. cool. i i think it's nice that it's still going on you know i can't imagine being at the very first one and thinking okay you know well, what's the measured stick you know how many do we have to have in order to want to do it a second time mm -hmm. uh, well yeah i mean and I, we probably would have just done it no matter how many because that, that first year we learned that we had the family, the, the support of all of those families too. Okay. Because I mean, it, at that point it was five years after the after the plane crash when we first started planning it. And, and nothing had really been done. You know, we, we told them we were gonna promise that, that we were, were gonna forget and we were gonna keep the promise. But you know, at that point we had, you know, the memorial inside the uh, Gallagher. We do the Lake Front do the thing in January. Um, and what a lot of people don't realize is on the east side of Gallagher, between Gallagher and the old practice field, there are 10 um, cypress trees planted, all cypress trees planted there, which there's one for, for each one of the, the men who died. And so I actually found that on, I think it was maybe the Orange Connection app. 
because you know my favorite place to walk is on campus a lot of people go to Grand Royal Lake I'm gonna go to campus <laughs> and um it had that on there the one thing you have to do before you graduate and so I went by there. I'm like I've, I've seen those but I didn't know that's what it was that needs to be there needs to be a QR code or something there yeah that it says that so and I put something on Facebook about it and you know I mean and I've become friends with so many uh, of the families that several of them like we had no idea they didn't know and so we were Jason and Carrie and I were actually talking about this just the other day like maybe one of the things we need to do with some of the funds from the race is you know put a plaque out there or something so that people know that that's what they're what they're for and so yeah, I walk through there too by the neighbor county but I know where you're talking yeah about. yeah there, there's there's 10 of them which I, I didn't count until I read it somewhere and I'm like I have to go check this out well, we can do this a ribbon around it for race day yeah each one something. Or something you know and, and, and we're working with trying to um with again with some of the race funds in the in the lobby the, the more lobby the southeast lobby of Gallagher is doing an interactive kind of like I kind of like at museums have like an interactive computer thing set up there to where, you know, you will have the, the bios from each one of the guys and just kind of like fitted news footage stuff just to kind of to help better explain to people, especially like the, the younger people that pass through there, what this is and why it's here. New generation, yes. Mm -hmm. And they love technology. So. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that that's on, on our radar too to, to hopefully facilitate. Jason said the same thing about his highlight memory was the rain. Yeah. <laughs> because it's so unusual, I guess. Too. Well, people yeah, still came out. Exactly. And that, and that was, was probably one of my favorite ones because it's like, okay, we're, we're not the only ones who feel this passionate about it right. <laughs> and feel this deeply about it. So how do you decompress or celebrate once the day's done? Um, the day's over for well, usually year. I roll right into the spring football game. <laughs> oh, so, okay. So my... Um, you know, I, I have a, a pretty good core group of people that I spend most football game days with that we tailgate together and they will come and set up like before the race and set up their tent and cheer on the runners as they finish and then I just pack up and I go just walk across the street and sit down with them and have a couple of cold beers and go into the game. It's like, okay. And then a lot of times, you know, that evening we'll, we'll do baseball. So a full day of orange. Yes, and then, then, you know, on Sunday, I'm like, I'm not moving. <laughs> I'm exhausted. I'm just staying home today. Oh, that's a good pat on the back. Yeah. yeah. A little decompress. I'm, I'm kind of sad, though. This year is the first year that none of my kids are coming because they just can't. But um, well, another one of my fondest memories. So one of the first years we did it, I don't know if this is the first or second year. I just remember my youngest was in fifth grade, and they had gone on some field trip in town that day. And gone to CC's Pizza to eat lunch, like the whole group of them. Well, we're, he's helping me at registration that evening, and it's in, we saw it in the big lobby in Gallagher, so it had to be probably the second year. And Matt Fletcher, which, you know, we all know him as skirt guy and this and that, and, you know, fan extraordinaire. And I did, had no idea who Matt was, no idea. But he comes up and just starts talking to Gabe, and, you know, the mom and me, I'm like, excuse me, excuse me, how do you know my son? Why, why are you talking to my kid? And so he explained, and of course, he was in college then, and a bunch of his, him and his friends had gone to CeCe's Pizza for lunch that day, and there's all these fifth graders, and so they just asked Gabe, hey, can we, can we sit at the table with you and your friends? <laughs> and so, I mean, Matt and I have been friends since then, and so he's, you know, watched my kids grow up, and... It's all about connections, isn't it? It, it is, it is. That family gets bigger and bigger. Yeah, and, you know, my, my boys will always be here... My, my daughter hasn't participated as much. She's there more for moral support, but as far as like workhorses, you know, the, the boys would always be there on the night before helping set things up and tear them down and on race day. And the last couple of years, I put them in charge of our race day social media. So I just give them a, a golf cart and all the logins to our social medias and like just go take pictures and post things like as they're happening. And that's not work. That's just, that's fun. That's probably. fun for them. Yeah, so I'm gonna I'm gonna miss them doing that this year. So they understood the why. Absolutely. The yeah, I mean, and they they have um, had the opportunity to, to to visit with several of the family members as well, just because they they have helped so much, and it, it's good for them to to see the the flip the other side of that, the aftermath of in 
just the genuine appreciation that that those families pour into us about what we're doing. Did, did they attend to wish you? Your, any of your children? My daughter is right now. She's she um she's about thirty one now, but she didn't start until she she just finished her she halfway through her junior year. But she's taking the semester off to have a baby. <laughs> but she's she's on track to uh, to finish, and then she, I think she wants to go to get her master's. So, like, good for you. Good for her. Yeah. But one more, one more OSU, real, real, real <laughs> Ex alum. Then exactly. Yeah, I guess they are all fans, regardless of whether they went there or they not. They are. Well, you know, my, and my young son gave me. He moved to Boise, Idaho. You know. That's where we're playing football this year. Our, our third game is there. And are you going to go? Well, no, my daughter's having a baby. Oh, well. <laughs> I was, she, 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 she just too bad. Time. She's like, just go, go. She's like, it'll be. And I'm like, I, I can't. I, I can't. I, there's other football games. <laughs> so I did tell my son, I was like, you have to go. And he's like, well, I'll try. It's like, you can't just try. You have to go. We'll probably never play there again. You have to go. <laughs> is that the one that has blue field? Yes. Is it? Okay. Yeah. I'd like to, that's on my list, too. I'd like to yeah. go. <laughs> so I'm kind of sad I couldn't go, but I get the grandbaby out of it, so it's all right. <laughs> so when you when you do this like on that morning, you have to be there by 6 a.m. early? Jason are usually a little early. J Jason will be there at like at 5.30 when I'm oh, waiting for them to open the gates. Early, early. I, I usually get there, you know, 5.30, 5.45-ish, but we're, we can get into the stadium at night now because I mean, we store up all the stuff in there. When we went from registration in Gallagher into the stadium where we do um, the registration in the morning. So that evening, we'll go ahead and, like, set up, up the tables and chairs where we're going to need them the next morning and, you know, put the, obviously we don't put the t-shirts out or anything, but that way in the morning we just have to, like, get the boxes out and set it up and, get our volunteer meeting underway. Get it prepped for, it for the next day. Yeah. And do breakfast at 11 o'clock. Huh? Uh, <laughs> we we actually serve donuts at our volunteer meeting, so um, we have that. The shoutings be at 7. But we meet inside the stadium, so we'll go in and sit on in the stands on the south side. And, you know, it's our safety meeting, but we always have, like, a guest speaker to talk to our volunteers, especially, you know, some of the people that have never volunteered before or, like, just here going to college and it's so like this year um coach boynton's going to visit with our volunteers but we've had um you know scott sutton talked one year mike gundy in addition to like um mick weiberg uh, several of the family members karen hancock bill hancock talked to them um and it's Ch um chad talked to well the year it rained chad weiberg uh, did our volunteer meeting our guest speaker in it it's very impactful for our volunteers to help them remember why they come back every year to help us when they get that just that, that personal touch of why it's important to 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 the people that matters to the most that that were there you know that would be good for the racer whoever's participated in the run to hear that too yeah we have um usually you know, like whoever's president at the time will say a few words at the start line and Coach Boynton or or whoever's basketball coach time will will just say a few things okay. at, at the start line when we're lining the runners up. That's when it, Coach Sutton may have done it early on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It'd be hard too, I think. Yeah, okay. it's it, it it is. I but I always try to be at at the start line to hear those things. What's the oldest person I mean, how, do you know how old the oldest person um, has, has crossed the no, line? No, I we have seventies, eighties. We've definitely had some seventies. Of course, you know, I mean, like, um, it was a Hancock family. I'm trying to think. I guess his his parents participated until he, you know they were older and since passed away. But yeah, they would. But, but we have we have several that will cut they'll come and walk it or but yeah I don't I don't because I don't see a whole lot of that that end of it because Jason does the, the registration and gets everything ready for the awards ceremony. I'm sure that the youngest is probably somebody in a stroller on the front, <laughs> on the front we, run. We do have some of those, but you know some of those 
a, a lot of the elementary schools, you know, have the um, the running clubs, mm. and so you know we'll have a lot of the the kids from the local schools here that are in their running clubs at you know Westwood or Sanger Ridge or whatever that that will come and do the one mile fun run. Oh, okay. Which is good. The, yeah. I, I love watching those little kids cross the finish line. <laughs> well, then someone's educating them on, on why, the, you mm -hmm. know, why, why the run is important. Yeah. I mean, we have gone in, in years past and, like, talked to school groups and things, but they're just, we haven't done that in a while. I want to get back into that now that people are getting back out and about again. Yeah. We're close to that, aren't we? Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully. We're closer hopefully. and closer. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So between now and Saturday, what are some of the things you're having to do? Um, you have you done what you need to do? I'm pretty much just like like double checking things off my list. Like when I'm sitting out there waiting, I was emailing to uh, to follow up on a few things. You know, I've got um, Jess Barnes with Shake Rattle and Roll has historically always done our like like the music leading up to to play, like leading up to start time, and then he sets up the, the sound and everything for our pre race announcements. And so I was just double checking with him. Hey, by the way, <laughs> just want to make sure we're still good to go. And, you know, like things like I just remember last night, I forgot to touch base with um, on cue about because they always donate the ice, which a good friend of mine is one. And he's like, you don't have to like ask me months ahead because I'll forget. So he's like, just ask me the week before. OK, <laughs> but, you know, then I'll, I'll double check um, you know, with Roger Fry at Homeland as far as reminding him you know, race day Saturday because he'll order the bananas ahead of time. And so I'll just be, I'll just be double checking to make sure everybody's still on, on track to show up. <laughs> and bananas for what, 800 or 1,000 people, that's all of bananas. Yeah, and I mean, we've got volunteers that, that do our food table every year. And so they'll cut them, usually we'll cut them in half. Okay, wow. Well, go a little further then. And not everyone wants one. I exactly. Guess. And so in, in the ones that are left over, um, a lot of times we will take them like, to the fire department or like the, the unopened box of snacks we take back to the grocery store and then they donate it to like our daily bread or somewhere like that but you know if we have um water left over we'll deliver, deliver a lot of that to like the fire stations because you know they're well into summer and fires wildfire season and we, we know that it will be it will be used <laughs> So besides bananas and granola bars, what would be some of the other, or, or is that um, basically it? it? It kind of varies from year to year. Like this year, I think he's got he's so many pictures, like some, like cheese stick crackers. I mean, you want kind of like carb things. So we do a lot of like, like the Nutri-Grain bars and like the Belvita cookies and, and things like that. Just things that are just quick and easy for, for people to grab. Most popular would probably be granola. Well, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. That's usually what I have for breakfast every, on race day. I might get a donut if I have time at the volunteer meeting, but other than that, I'm just like grabbing something off the snack table as I go by. Okay. So you're not going to be that engulfed with it for this year, this, this next week. So you'll have a no. little bit of, you got it under control. Yeah. We, I mean, and like the registration and packet pickup, I'll go to the ones in Stillwater, which we have one tomorrow at Iron Mike Brewery. We'll be there from, from one to six and, I'll pop in and help with that some, but it's one of those things where we have people who volunteer to do that, and that's like the only thing they do all year to help, and I just have to like let them do it. <laughs> Delegate with style. Huh? <laughs> I just show up for moral support. <laughs> well, you earned your earned that position too, and you do have to share a little bit. Yeah, yeah a little bit. and it's fun for me to just like on race day just to see the race happen. Even though I don't usually get too far away from from the finish line, it's good to be able to just get out to like cheer people on and visit and just see the fruits of our labor. <laughs> so is the finish line and the start line the same line? Um, no, but they're close. So we start on Duck Street. I mean, on Duck. We, yeah, yeah, we start on Duck. Okay. Between Miller and Matthew. Okay. And then it curves around onto Hall of Fame. Okay. But then the finishes. Um, on Knob Block right behind Gallagher. So they'll turn off of Athletic and they make that curve and then the finish line is just right down there before you get to the curve that, um, that the work curves right behind Gallagher. There's, there's only one way there. Okay. Like you have to come off of Duck Street. So do they, they come down Athletic 
onto Monroe. Um, they'll come from Monroe and turn on to Athletic, like okay. the 5K. And so they'll run. That's a. They might go. I tell you, I don't get away from the from the finish line very. I always look at the map once a year when we have our meeting with the city. But as far as like where it goes. I think they'll have to deal with I'm um, thinking the construction there that, that's for where they by Noble. Oh no we'll Monroe there. Probably not even probably not up that far. They will no, because they come down off the five K comes down off of um farm road. Okay. And then comes back up. Okay. Yeah, they won't. Yeah. I guess you have to be aware of that though where mm. where construction's yeah. going on. Jason touches base with, um, oh, there's a guy, it's like city engineer, and then the guy that was you that does the same thing to say, by the way, is there anything we need to be aware of? <laughs> Do you have to get permission or work with someone in that in that neighborhood that's there, the uh, West, Westwood neighborhood or whatever No, because we don't block any of those streets off, because that's pretty much, the, the 10K mostly goes through there. And by then, they're, they're so spaced out, but the first couple of years, it's, it's not well as I come around about because I just want to block it out of my memory. Um, we actually walked the the five k ten k courts, and at that point, we weren't. We went out towards the high school one year, but we we just had flyers. We just like stick in people's door. Hey, by the way, this is coming through. You know, ask people if they could like maybe not park on the street for a short period of time, or come out and cheer people on. And now that's pretty much contained just to the Westwood neighborhood. Is the only neighborhood we run through, and there are so many of the people that live there that live there for a long time that they'll, you know, set up their their own water stands and they'll have music playing out there and they'll just sit out there and cheer them on. So they they've embraced it and it's, it's fun for the runners. Okay, that's good too. Yeah. Well, I'm assuming that the music starting off is going to be upbeat and like I'm thinking celebration or whatever, whatever <laughs> some of those yeah. '70s and '80s music. But yeah, we have um, some volunteers that volunteer it every year. And some good friends of mine, this will be their second or third year to, to volunteer, but the corner that we have them at is like Monroe. I think it's Farm and Monroe. But the first year they did it, they're like, we didn't know that we were supposed to like decorate our corner because the girls down, you know, block from us. I'm like, well, that's your own choice. He's like, oh, they're not going to beat us next year. <laughs> so they have like a little competition going with the volunteers to block over to see who can have the funnest corner. <laughs> And I guess the runners pay attention to that. Too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Definitely. I'll have to have someone dress up. Yeah. Yeah, I, I wouldn't put it past them. And p does Pistol Pete go to those various things, or he just stays around the finish and start line? Pretty much just the finish and start line, except for that one year where, uh, where he decided he was going to run the whole thing. Okay. It's like, goodness. You think they get the little kids of love? The, the elementary school kids will yeah. love, love all that. Yeah. So he, he's there for pictures, and except we usually have the, the palm curls and some of the cheerleading squad comes out. We're hoping this year with it being close to football, maybe we can, maybe they'll straggle out and say hi to people. I don't know if they are going on that morning, but it would be nice. <laughs> surely, surely something's going on. Well, I don't yeah. know. August 28th. I don't know when it's the first football um, game. It's the week after that. So. Our race this week, so they should have some practices or something. Well, they should. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> I wouldn't recognize some of their faces, but you can tell by their gear that they were. Yeah, I imagine it probably have to be like a an organized effort to come out there. Probably some coaches gonna have to bring them all up and say, "Hey, <laughs> hey, let's go say hi to people." Well, while we're speaking of that, let's have you tell the story about running into uh, H. Holden. Oh yes. Um, so it was a year ago and I had a brand new puppy. My, my son and daughter-in-law had fostered puppies and I, you know, fought off the urge to get one of the first 11 ones and this 12th one is just kind of like, all right, she's just kind of mine. But, um, like I said, one of my favorite places to walk on campus, especially with the dog, because there's places for her to get a drink of water, cool off, and I can expose her to so many things to, to try to desensitize her, like traffic and things. And I always park in the West End Zone. And you know, walk down that that brick, um, that new brick sidewalk, which I love. Yeah. But you know, she she was just a baby. She's like six months old, so we we're still trying to learn manners and how to walk on a leash. And um, 
Mr. Holden and his wife were going to meet um, with the athletic department. He had a, a, a mock-up of the Barry Sanders statue that they had commissioned him to, to make. And it still doesn't dawn on me who he is. I'm just, but my, my puppy, Remy, decides she's going to go say hi and being obnoxious. And I'm apologizing. I'm like, I'm sorry. We're so we're going to miss. And they, they were so kind. And I, I had on a race shirt that day because we had just, um, we just gotten the new ones. It was the ones for the for the virtual race when it had the Eddie Sutton signatures on it, and I always put a couple of um, the well the lapel pins in my pocket because if I see somebody on campus wearing an old race shirt, I would usually offer them one and tell them, you know, thanks for running or volunteering or, or whatever they do. And after I walked away from visiting with them about dogs and such, nothing nothing to have to do with with anything else. I remember it had the, those lapel pins in my pocket, and so I turned around and I was like, hey, by the way. And then I, at that point, I introduced myself. I'm, you know, with Remember the Ten Run, and you know, you know, I had the shirt on. And I said, you know, I was like, and I just, you're obviously an OSU fan, so I just want to offer you, like, the, the lapel pin. And at that point, he said, introduced himself as Mr. Holden, said, I, I designed the kneeling cowboy statue. <laughs> and I, at that point, I'm like, I can't believe I didn't know this. But she's got the little statue to stand in. So I, I thanked him for always being, being kind enough to let us use the likeness of that statue on, you know, our, our race marketing materials and t-shirts every year. And then he, that's when he showed me, he's like, oh yeah, this is what I'm doing now. I'm doing the race of Sanders statue. So you just, you just never know who you're going to run into. I wondered what you had to go through in order to get to do the image, mm -hmm. to use the image. You know, we just asked for permission and he, he was very kind. I mean, because, you know, we're not, we're not making money off off of it which you know it was important for us for him to know you know, like any money that we make we're giving back to the university in, in some capacity so yeah it was it was a neat neat coincidence it, it was as a very chance encounter just like timing is everything well, like, you do a selfie. <laughs> i did not do that <laughs> <laughs> but it, it was a good story i think he did the t the boom picking stadium mm -hmm. too did yeah i mean the statue yeah, yeah i think he did he did so I, I think he's our statue guy, as long as we want statues. So where are they going to put Barry Sanders, do you I know? have no idea. Well, you may be, it may be in that same. There's room for more yeah. work where Boone is. It seems like it'd be, I mean, especially if they're doing the football likenesses, it seemed like a good place to put them. Mm -hmm. yeah. but we'll see. Yeah, you never know who you're going to run into. No, you don't. You don't. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I've seen, like, like I went to, to Vegas one year and saw people in the airport wearing our race t-shirts. Well, that makes you feel good, doesn't it? Yeah. Just, it, it, you know, if I see them out and about somewhere, I mean, I make a point of just, you know, asking them, you know, did, did you run or volunteer? And just, you know, thanking them for participating and are you coming back this year? <laughs> we always need people back. I'm not really promoting it to get them. Well, I guess you are promoting it some, but not, well, I'm going to just scratch that. Yeah, what I was thinking. It's just more, you know, I just kind of think it's just like being but a good ambassador for what we do. I, I love it when I see people wearing the shirts and, and I always want to to thank, even if they're just wearing it because it's like the most comfortable t-shirt they have. It's still like, hey, thank, thanks for wearing our shirt. It's a good talking point and good Ex way to connect. To exactly. Yeah. Are you carry spare ones in your car? Do, you know, sure. some years I do. <laughs> Until I got a dog, <laughs> and she she's white, and her shirts are dark, and it's like there's just a little white dog there everywhere. So, white and black. She needs a little orange collar then. She has one. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> she's good to go. She does have one. All right, we've covered a lot. Anything else that we need to that I have a thought to ask that I don't know to ask? You know, I don't. No know. major accidents. No major accidents. No people. lawsuits. No, we've been very fortunate, but we have insurance for that. <laughs> Not through your company, through. No, we have. There's a specialty company that that, that does it. Yeah. Yeah, because one of the requirements for the city is to water. We have to have the. It's a, it's a million dollars in liability. So that's part of some of the expense you pay mm -hmm. with the registration too. Yeah. So you have the city involved, the university involved, the neighborhood, the hospital, mm -hmm. food places. Yeah, we in the pre's. It's a, a, a lot. Plus, I guess, I guess additional sponsors that give you money. Um, we sort of, I mean, like we have three major sponsors. Um, MidFirst Bank. I think they're still on the list. Don't quote me on that one. 
but th there's a couple of like OSHA Athletic Department and the president's office donate um, five thousand dollars each. I feel like there's another entity on campus that donated the five thousand, which a lot of that helps with our operating expenses. And so then you know the additional stuff we get from from registration, we can put back into you know our account foundation and towards our gift to the counseling services and the scholarships. scholarships. So the scholarships is in addition to the twenty thousand mm -hmm. that goes in. Okay. Yeah. Good causes. It is. Yeah. It is. It's it's been a good fit for me. Well, I think the OSU and the community capital community's lucky to have you. <laughs> thank you. We're willing to do all this. So we're we're happy to do it. Well, thank you for sharing today. Go post, thank you. right? Absolutely. Um, <laughs>